When it comes to construction adhesive, one thing for sure, there's no shortage of marketing hype. Some of these products claim to be eight times stronger than the competition. Is that a true claim or are some products just as good and less expensive? Some of these products are extremely expensive and make some pretty bold claims. So today we're going to try to cut through that marketing hype and find out which of these brands is truly the best. Now we're going to do this in a two-part series since we have 10 different products to test and there's no way I can create a video or a test on all 10 products and keep it under about 15 minutes. So we'll get started with part one, which is gonna include the products designed for marine exposure, and part two is designed for those products that involve periodic exposure to moisture. To determine which construction adhesive is best, we'll be conducting four separate tests along with multiple samples of each test. In the first test, we'll be measuring shear strength using two by fours. In the second test, we'll be measuring the tensile strength using one by twos, all cut from the same stack of lumber. A jig was used to ensure the holes were centered, equally spaced, and drilled in a straight up and down position. Painter's tape was applied to the center of the board before cutting the the board into two pieces to prevent the construction adhesive from sticking to the sides of the board resulting in inaccurate test results. Each test piece was then numbered before cutting the boards into two pieces to make sure the original fiber pattern was maintained when gluing each test sample back together in its original position. In the third test, after curing for eight days, the 1x2s experienced continuous water exposure for 12 hours prior to the test. In the fourth test, we'll be measuring tensile strength using PVC end caps. Tape was wrapped around each of the end caps, then a razor knife was used to cut the tape. Each of the PVC end caps was cleaned with denatured alcohol and allowed to dry before applying the construction adhesive to the end caps. Each product was applied and allowed to cure in a controlled environment for a total of eight days, which is a day longer than the amount of time required for all products to fully cure. I had a couple of older tubes of JB Weld lying around, so I thought I'd throw it into the experiment just out of curiosity to keep it fun and interesting. Obviously, this isn't really a fair test. This is a two-part system. However, it would be very interesting to see how it does on both the wood tensile strength test as well as the PVC. In order to test the shear strength, what I'll do is apply the test piece holder on top of the end of the 2x4s, and then I'll slide it into the test jig. Once the test begins, I'll pull up on the board until the two boards separate and we'll see how much force it takes to break the boards apart. F26 is a premium quality waterproof construction adhesive. It's designed for tile, paneling, subfloor, construction, and general repair. It's made by Leach and they've been in business since 1930. F26 put up a big number of 1,779 pounds on the first sample. The next sample dropped to 804, which is still pretty impressive. The third was down to 709. So flex glue works on all types of metal, wood, foam, rubber, tile, ceramic, marble, porcelain, glass, granite, brick, concrete, stucco, and vinyls. The first was 730 pounds. Next was a little higher at 950. The third was back down to 812. Real heavy duty construction adhesive is an all purpose adhesive that's 100% waterproof. Just like all construction adhesives, it'll work on wood, metal, plastic, and a lot more. The first was only 574. The second was up quite a bit to 977. The third was down again to 735. All-purpose quick grip made by Red Devil. It's a powerful permanent construction adhesive. The first was 1,180, very impressive. The second was down some to 873. The third was up again to 1,367, pretty good. 3M Marine Adhesive 5200 is a highly recommended product by a lot of viewers. It's a high strength product designed for marine applications. I'm really looking forward to seeing just how good this product is. The wood broke very early in the test. The 3M Construction Adhesive is definitely stronger than the wood. Very impressive results at 1,653. The third was down again to 1,072. So did the construction adhesive fail or did the wood fail? In two out of three instances, it was the construction adhesive with F26. So what about flex glue? 
It looks like the glue failed three out of three times before the wood failed. What about Gorilla Glue? Now, in two out of three instances, the glue failed. In one instance, the wood failed. With Red Devil, it was a combination of both. In this instance, you can see that the wood partially failed as well as the glue. This looks like the wood and glue both failed about the same time, and this looks like it was just the glue failing. Okay, this is 3M. Obviously, the wood failed three out of three times, so 3M is definitely by far the strongest product. No matter what the numbers show, 3M is actually destroying the board because it is sticking just that well. The results of the shear strength test are very interesting with 3M Marine Adhesive dominating the showdown by averaging 1,363 pounds, which is over 200 pounds more than Red Devil, which is not Marine rated. F26 did a very respectable job at nearly 1,100 pounds. Flex finished in fourth, Gorilla in fifth at 762 pounds. In the next test, we'll be measuring tensile strength of these one by twos. Once the piece of wood is in position, I'll slide the pens in through the wood and begin the test. Five hundred seventy four pounds is very impressive. The next one is even better at six hundred and ten. The third was down some to four hundred and thirty three. Let's see how flex glue compares. The first was only 233, less than half the numbers put up by F26. The second was up a little 235. The third was down to only 168. Let's see how Gorilla performs. The first was 272. The second was a little bit better at 277. The third was 159, so a little bit better than Flex. Let's see if Red Devil can compete with F26. 287 is better than Gorilla and Flex, but not as good as F26. The second was 485, much better. The third was down slightly to 402 pounds. Pretty impressive numbers for the least expensive product we're testing, but can 3M compete with F26? The first was 539. The second was down a little to 489. The third was up some to 579. Just to have a little fun, let's see how JB Weld compares with construction adhesives. The first was 619 pounds and the wood failed, not JB Weld. The second was 718 and the wood failed again. The third was 747 and the wood failed yet again. JB Weld is making this look way too easy. For the wood tensile strength test, not surprisingly, JB Weld, a two-part system, totally crushed the competition by delivering nearly 700 pounds, but the wood failed in all three tests, preventing it from demonstrating its true potential. F26 and 3M were in a virtual tie at nearly 540. Red Devil delivered 391, Gorilla 236, and Flex 212. So just how well do these construction adhesives work when they've been soaked in water. We're about to find out. We'll be testing three samples of the 1x2 for tensile strength after being soaked in water for 12 hours. The water seems to be having an impact on F26 with only 353 pounds of tensile strength on the first sample. The second was down even more to 269. The third was down even more to 177. Will water exposure hurt flex? The first was only 152. The second was up a little 230. The third was down a little to 226, so water exposure has had an impact on flex as well. Gorilla did fairly well at 269 in the first sample. The second was down some to 172. The third was down again to 153. Now Red Devil is not designed for continuous water exposure, so this is going to be interesting. The first was only 57. The second was 37. 
The third was only 49. The performance is not a surprise when you consider that the product is not designed for continuous water exposure. Let's see if 3M can handle the water exposure. The first was the best yet at 392, but the wood failed, not 3M. The second was down slightly to 382, but still very good. The third is the best yet at 402 pounds, but once again the wood failed, so 3M is the only product tested so far that seems to be unaffected by the water exposure. So can JB Weld do any better than 3M? The wood failed at 400 pounds on the first sample. The second sample was even better, but the wood failed again at 493 pounds. The third was down to 469 and the wood broke again. The 12 hours of continuous water exposure really highlighted the differences between the brands. 3M finished well above the other construction adhesives, highlighting its advantage over the competition in a marine environment. F26 did a respectable job and finished ahead of Flex and Gorilla. In fairness to Red Devil, it's not designed for marine exposure and this test demonstrates the importance of selecting the appropriate adhesive for the job. Let's see how these products compare on PVC. F26 didn't do too well at 50 pounds. F26 cured on the wood just fine, but for some reason it didn't cure in the center of the PVC. The second was up slightly to 63. The third was down some to 43. Unfortunately, F26 just didn't cure well on the PVC, hurting the performance. Let's see if Flex can do any better. The first sample was 166, much better. The second was only down a pound to 165. The third was down slightly again to 145. Let's see if Gorilla can do any better. The first was only 93. The second was actually up a little to 107. The third was up again to 140. Let's see if Red Devil can do any better. Just like F26, unfortunately Red Devil isn't curing in the center of the PVC, even though it did just fine curing with wood. The second was up a little to 59. The third was down a little, would have done a lot better if the adhesive had fully cured. Can 3M do any better? The first was only 120. The second was up a little to 147. And the third remained the same at 147. Just how well can JB Weld stick to a smooth surface? The first was 404 pounds, wow! The second was 247. The third was up quite a bit to 461, very impressive. In some marine applications, forming a bond between two smooth, unsanded surfaces may be necessary. The PVC tensile strength test highlighted the ability of the construction adhesives to do just that. Not surprisingly, JB Weld delivered more than twice the tensile strength compared to the construction adhesives. However, Flex Glue did very well on this test, delivering 159 pounds compared to 138 for 3M and 113 for Gorilla. Even after eight days, F26 and Red Devil didn't fully cure or else they would have probably done quite a bit better. So to really simplify this, which marine adhesive provides the best all around performance? 3M totally dominated the showdown, followed by F26, Flex, and then Gorilla. Is there a direct correlation between price and performance? Absolutely not. Overall, F26 outperformed Gorilla and Flex and cost substantially less. While 3M costs more, in a moment we're going to see that it's actually a very good value when you consider its performance. Regarding the price of Flex, it definitely seems overpriced. While 3M performs quite a bit better than F26, it's quite a bit more expensive. F26 delivered 11 pounds of holding strength per penny compared to 5 pounds per penny compared to 3M. While 3M is expensive when you consider its strength, it's a better value than both Gorilla and Flex. So which construction adhesive won this show? down. Definitely 3M5200. It wasn't even close. The numbers actually look a little bit low for 3M5200 because it was so strong that the wood failed on multiple tests. Now with that being said, there are some other decent products we tested, but overall I definitely go with 3M. Now just as a reminder, I'm not sponsored by 3M or any other manufacturer. I buy all the products for the different tests myself just to make sure that there's no sort of influence that's being provided by a manufacturer. Now, in the next round of competition, we're going to have more construction adhesives, this time those that are not marine rated. It's going to be very interesting to see how they perform, and we'll also compare 
the Marine against the non-Marine to see if the Marine design has an impact on the overall strength of the construction adhesive. As usual, just want to say thanks so much for all your video ideas. I hope you give me some more of those. I always look forward to reading your comments. Please take care and look forward to next time.